Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at one of my favorite airplanes because it's also the one I have the most time in the real world flying, and that's Cessna 172 without any of that fancy G1000 mumbo jumbo. Well, let's go ahead and get started. So when it comes to the Cessna 172, it does not need an introduction. This is an absolutely solid workhorse of an aircraft. It's affordable, it's comfortable, it can sit well, not everybody, if you have one full tank of gas, that is, but it's nice. I mean, I got the leather option and everything like that. So uh, first things first, um, we're not going to worry about going too, too crazy with the checklist, even though this would be something that I would normally go crazy with because it would be in the real world. But again, we're going to go ahead and get this thing rolling and take it for a nice, gentle flight. Uh, currently, we're sitting here uh, nice and uh, high and dry at Golf Charlie Foxtrot Victor. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of uh, overwater flying today, so we're going to make sure we bring our Mae West with us. All right, let's get this thing started. So first things first, we want to go ahead and make sure that all of our stuff works. So normally what we would do is we go ahead and flip on our two master switches here. Then we go ahead and flip on our pitot heat. We'd also go ahead and drop the flaps all the way down. Now what we do after that point is we'll give everything a few moments to go ahead and kind of catch up. Once it's gotten to that position where it's down, we go ahead and kill this. Go outside, we give everybody a little jingle, we lift things up. We'd also put our fingers right on the pitot control, the pitot heater tube, I should say. Just the tube itself. And we go ahead and see how hot it is. If Obviously, if it's hot, it's working. We get back inside the plane. We do our little briefing and everything like that. And uh, then we go ahead and get this thing rolling. So first things first, uh, we're going to have to go ahead and shut the pitot heat. I'm going to go ahead and activate my bacon light. I'm going to go turn my nav light on because it's kind of early in the morning. And we just want to be a little bit more visible. I'm going to come down here and uh, shut off the fuel cutoff valve. It's kind of a mistake. And um, we're basically ready to start. So starting this thing is pretty straightforward. In the old days, we used to have this little primer handle right over here. We go and basically jam fuel into the engine. Now we have fuel injection, so it's actually even easier to do. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and uh, turn on the fuel pump, and we're gonna jam this forward. Watch what happens to my fuel flow. All the way up, all the way down, shut off the fuel pump. So now what we do is we actually pull out the mixture control completely. When we start this thing, we're actually starting it with the primer, if you wanna kinda of think about it another way. So I'm gonna crack the throttle a teeny tiny bit. So here's the fancy game you're going to have to play. You're gonna to have to crank the starter, and the moment it catches, you're gonna to have to jam the right handle in. Let's see if my coordination's good today. Whoa, caught it. <laughs> nice. All right, go ahead and give it to about 1,000 RPM. Give everything a moment to go, whoa, 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 whoa. So in the real plane, of course, this thing would be wiggling back and forth like this when you're at an RPM like this. Give it just a little tiny bit more fuel, wait for it to stabilize. And that is a Cessna if I've ever seen one. The propeller that does not want to decide what it wants to do. All right, now that that's all been kicked on, we'll go ahead and flip on our avionics bus. We're going to get a bunch of warning lights. It's basically going to give us a little heads up. Uh, looks uh, we're in the wrong mode here. I'm actually going to swap it real quickly. Looks good to me, we're on GPS. Uh, normally we give you a little MSG in the bottom, which should give you a pretty good idea of where we're going. So in this case, our desired track is actually tree zero degrees. So I'll go ahead and dial this to tree zero, make our lives a little bit simpler. But today, instead of using GPS, we're actually gonna do this with VOR. So we're actually going to go over to our little communications radios while we're sitting here warming up. Push that sucker in, I'm gonna go ahead and select a frequency of 114.40. Go ahead and swap that. I'm gonna actually switch back to VLOC mode. Let's see if we can get a signal. Uh, it looks like we're a little too low to get a signal at this point. We're gonna have to get a little bit closer to our destination. 114.40, that's confirmed, that's confirmed. We're gonna turn that one on so we can hear it beep at us. So once we do get into range, it's a pretty good reference point. And this should get us pretty much all the way down to the destination. The heading is actually gonna be exactly the same at 30 degrees. In this case, we'll just take off, fly 30 degrees until we hit a point where we actually can reliably go ahead and um, pick up that signal so we can take it the rest of the way. So go ahead and pop this over to 30 degrees. We'll just set the heading bug, which we've done real quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look over all my controls real fast, make sure the engines are in the temperature ranges that I want them to. We're gonna go ahead and bring the flaps all the way back up. We don't need them dangling off the back of us as we're kind of cruising around here. One last check of all my switches. Um, everything looks good, everything looks good, everything looks good. Again, I love this plane for its simplicity here. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this thing taxiing and the nearby airport is uh, runway is actually right here. We'll do a midfield takeoff. Uh, slow down, mister. All right, go ahead and take us off of parking. Give it just a little bit of gas. It does not take much on a 172. All right, let's get rolling. Kick the rudder all the way. Let's uh, knock this guy in the head with the wing. Eat this! All right, good. All right, we're just going to kind of proceed right along here, sneak in this little zone here. Uh, the wind today is uh, pretty much negligible. We can see that it seems to be favoring uh, this runway that way, so we're going to go take a right once we do get up to the runway here. Ah, I'm putting your face right into the sun. It's like looking into a laser beam. 
man, this thing wants to roll. So we have the option of taking off the flaps or not taking off the flaps today. Uh, we've got plenty of runway behind us, even though we're doing a midfield takeoff. So I have no problem uh, not using the flaps. Running on the runway, we want to make sure we get everything all set up as far as that goes. We're going to turn on our landing light. Again, it's pretty early in the morning. We're also going to make sure that we are turned on as far as our transponder goes. So I'm going to set this to the altitude mode so everybody in the air can see where we are. And now we're in good shape. Got my left wing, looks pretty good, looks pretty good. Kind of taxi us on here. Again, this is a very, very room room kind of an aircraft. All right, that is a beautiful mountains in the distance. I'm gonna smoothly apply full power. One of the things I love about this aircraft is it's either full power or cruise power. There's no less power unless, of course, coming in for a landing or something like that. And there we go. So we're looking for a speed of about 55 knots to lift up the front wheel, doesn't take much. There's 55 knots right there, I'll lift up the front wheel. And we're just going to pop a wheelie until the thing wants to come airborne, which it just did. We'll go ahead and use a little bit of right rudder here. Kind of restabilize and bring everything back the way that it needs to be. And now we are on our way once again. So our initial heading today is going to bring us about 30 degrees. Uh, safest and quickest way to do that is going to take a left over the water here. So I'm going to go ahead and get us a little bit of altitude underneath us before I go ahead and do that. And we'll kind of make our way there right away. Looking for a climb speed of about 75 knots. But again, I'm not in a super duper aggressive climb here because we're not going to be flying that high today anyway. As you turn, uh, don't forget to use just a teeny bit of lift, left rudder, especially if you're going to be taking a nice gentle bank like this at 30 degrees or so. About to prepare to get blinded. Prepare to get blinded. Zap. What is this, Africa? Actually, we're off the coast of Africa. What am I saying? All right, our destination is actually in view. It's just a different mountain, different, different island, different island. All right, I'm going to go bring us along this way. Come straighten out a little bit. I want to bring ourselves back north. And we're looking pretty good. I want to go give ourselves a little bit of trim. The trim on this aircraft is a Microsoft standard. So that means it's the wrong kind of sensitive. It's not sensitive when you don't not need it to not be not sensitive. Uh, I think you'll know exactly what I mean the first time you try this. So basically, I'm going to sit here at full throttle. And so we get to about 3,000 feet. And then I'll go ahead and I'll lean everything out and start getting ready for our cruise here. Just a little bit. And it looks like, ah, oh, well, guess what we just detected? Listen to the beeps. Yeah, that's what I was hoping. Nice. So it looks like we're a little off course. We need to come to our left just a little bit, which is what I expected. Now, VOR and GPS is basically uh, going to give you the same kind of information. It's going to tell you how off course or where you're trying to be is. I'm just watching this needle right here in the middle and kind of watching it slowly hiking its way towards the middle. Go ahead and turn the brightness up on my panels a little bit so you can see a little bit better. And not too bad, not too bad. I'm just going to continue our climb. Again, yeah, normally about 75 knots is pretty good, but, you know, it's probably a little hot outside, so we do want to take advantage of things. Ooh, that is going to be... Ooh, my eyes. My eyes. My glasses, they do nothing. One of the tricky things about this aircraft is that even though we are fuel injected, we do have to worry about the red handle. But uh, we're not going to worry about the red handle too much until we get up to our cruise altitude. Basically, anything over a thousand feet, you're going to have to fit with the red handle a little bit. That's the mixture knob, by the way. But we'll deal with that once we get up to our cruise altitude of about 3,000 today. All right, I'm watching that little needle. It's slowly centering itself. I'll go ahead and zoom in to show you what I'm talking about here. Of course, it helps if you press the right button. That one right there, you can see I was just about centered. That lever line is uh, coming right along it, which means we're heading correctly. We can't have the automatic pilot actually follow a VOR. Uh, the downside to having the automatic pilot do it is that the VOR is not um, terribly accurate. It is reliable, it's just not precise. So as a result, your autopilot is basically going to be hunting for it the entire flight, which is, yeah, it's a little inefficient. The better way to actually use VR, and we'll take a look at that in a second, is to use the heading autopilot. But like I said, I'm gonna enjoy my little climb here. Okay, looks like we're pretty much right on course now. We'll go ahead and uh, bring a right nice gentle turn in here, and we'll start taking ourselves a little bit closer to what we need to do for that direct north heading. All right, looks pretty good. Go ahead and cancel that out. There we are, and we are in business. A little blast to trim there, and we can enjoy the islands. Automatic pilot engaged. We're going to not flip on nav, but what we are going to do is flip on heading holds. I'm actually going to flip on the heading hold. We'll go steady my lever line. It's a little off to my left here, which means my heading needs to be a little off to my left, which is exactly desirable. Once we hit our altitude, I'm going to go ahead and slap the alt button, and that's going to put our altitude hold on as well. All right, looks good. Usually there's a little orange light here. No big deal, though.
There we go. Nice. All right. So it looks to me like we're a little off course now. We'll aim for about, let's say, 20 degrees. We'll make a gentle little adjustment. And we're just going to bring ourselves to the left to try to recenter this needle right here. Now that we're at a 3000, we can start setting this one up for a nice little cruise situation. Pretty easy to do in this particular aircraft. All we're going to do is I'll pull the throttle back until we get to the right RPM. In this case, we're going to go ahead and reduce it to get to about 2500 RPM. Remember, since we're a fixed pitch propeller, when you do this sequence, you have to be very gentle and very patient because it's going to take a while for that needle to actually center where it needs to center. Okay, so now we're at that. We're going to go set our mixture correctly. Uh, setting the mixture on this one's pretty straightforward. You're simply going to look at your EGT here, and you're basically going to back out the mixture just a tiny bit, and you're going to watch what the EGT does. What you're trying to do is get this EGT needle, which represents your exhaust gas temperature, to get to its highest point, and then it starts to drop. You can actually take this little knob here in the real plane. I don't know if it's going to... Eh, it's going to let us do it. And you can actually set it so that you can see exactly what impact you're having. For example, if I were to stick it right here like this, I would know that that needle has gone up if it exceeds a certain point. So I'll sit here and fits with it a little bit more. You can see the needles come up a tiny bit. Looks like uh, we've had to pull it out a pretty significant amount in order to go ahead and get it to rise. Obviously, if you keep pulling the mixture control out more and more and more and the needle starts going down instead of up, that means you've gone way past the position you need to be in. In which case, push the handle back, you're going to damage your engine. All right, we're going to appreciate uh, these really, really, really nice islands as we kind of cruise along here. Obviously, flying over water in a single-engine airplane is never recommended. Uh, like I said, we brought a Mae West with us, so we're pretty, perfectly safe in the event that uh, bad things happen. All right, this is uh, basically 90% of flying here. Is uh, just sitting there, kind of relaxing, enjoying the sunrise in this particular case. <laughs> I love the distortion. They did such a nice job with that. We can flip off our landing light now. We don't need it anymore. We've uh, got a pretty good amount of altitude underneath us. Found out the other day that landing lights are only required if you're carrier airplanes. <laughs> That's kind of neat when you think about it. All right, looks like we're still off course a little bit. So I'm actually going to go ahead and adjust that just a little bit more to the left. There we go, just a little more to the left. By the way, this instrument will drift over time, so every once in a while you want to go ahead and recenter it with what you have as far as your uh, compass goes. So whatever this says, you need to make sure that this also agrees with. All right, that's looking pretty good so far. And you can see that needle has uh, centered itself very quickly and efficiently. We can go ahead and uh, start bringing ourselves back to the right to bring ourselves back closer to 30 degrees. Keep in mind, if you have a significant crosswind, uh, this can be really, really difficult to do. Basically, once we get back on 30 degrees, we'll take a look at this line. This line starts shifting a little to the right. It means we need a little more than 30 degrees to keep it centered, but we're not going to know until we get this thing a little bit more centered out. Uh, looking directly over the nose, I can already see our destination, which is uh, going to be this little kind of a chunk of stuff here. Uh, of course, we'll fast forward a little bit to uh, get to our top of climb. Of course, by top of climb, I meant top of descent. <laughs> All right, so our destination is uh, right off our nose here. It's going to be sitting there pretty comfortably. Uh, this is uh, L-A-N-Z-A-R-O-T. That's a Lanzarote. There's a Golf Charlie Romeo Romeo. So unfortunately for us, uh, we're going to have a bit of a crosswind today, which is going to make things a little bit more exciting. Uh, but fortunately, the crosswind is mostly over these mountains here, which means that uh, when we're going to landing, we're going to go ahead and use a simple crab method to kind of get ourselves a little bit closer. So uh, believe it or not, our destinations are pretty darn close. It looks like uh, we're a total of about six minutes away. Our total distance is about 12 nautical miles. Uh, remember, when we descend, we want to do about 500 feet per minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and dial in our desired altitude, which is going to be, like I said, about 1,000 feet, which is our field elevation. I'm going to go ahead and press on our vertical speed button. But notice, you don't have a vertical speed button on this GPS. Instead, you just have to mash the down button a few times. And once you do that, the nose just pushes itself over. So unfortunately for us, that blows our eardrums as we start going in an uncontrollable descent. Excuse you. We'll go ahead and now recenter that so that it's uh, behaving properly. Now we have our attitude control just but basically doing it the old-fashioned way. Go ahead and flip our Etting old back on and just shut itself off. But you can see how uh, we have a little bit of control over attitude. Airspeed's getting a little rich. We'll go ahead and pull that back just a teeny tiny bit. Speaking of rich, it's time to go ahead and adjust our mixture. Since we are under 3,000 feet, we can just go ahead and make that mixture rich, and uh, we're going to be in pretty good shape for a continued descent here. Take a look at our VOR. I'm significantly off course now, but when I was fitting with this a little earlier, I was discovering that um, indeed it had drifted. So by the time I even noticed it had drifted, we had already gotten ourselves significantly off course. Worth noting, that, by the way, our VOR station is 10 nautical miles away, but our GPS puts us at 9.5 nautical miles away. So you can see exactly how that can matter as far as GPS versus uh, VOR slash DME goes. 
All right, there's our little destination. You can see it pretty clear right off the nose here. Landing a 172 is uh, not what I consider to be much of a project. It's actually pretty stable. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to be approaching the runway, doing an airspeed of 65 knots. Uh, generally, you want to use full flaps. It's going to be a little bit safer than trying to land uh, just normally. Uh, but this particular aircraft and this particular version, they did a really nice job as far as uh, simulating just how slow this thing can go before bad things happen. But that being said, if you stall out right when you hit the runway, you're going to hit really hard. Now, I don't know that these big, strong wheels are nearly as big strong as uh, people claim them to be. All right, we'll go ahead and get ourselves a little bit closer here, but I'm just going to confirm that we go ahead and level off at a thousand feet. Notice the aircraft has decided to suddenly bring itself down at a sharp angle, and then it instantaneously adjusts itself uh, once it gets to this proper altitude. So uh, we're having a little bit of what we call automatic pilot issues, and in the real world, they can be automatic pilot issues, or sometimes the automatic pilot doesn't even work. Because uh, somebody will pull out the, you know, come in here and pop out the right circuit breaker and you'll forget that it happened. And then you'll be wondering why things aren't working the way you expect them to be. All right, kind of make our gentle little adjustment here. Luckily for us, uh, we do have some uh, light aids here to help her make ourselves a little bit easier here. Good old-fashioned pappy. And again, we have a four reds, which means we are way below glide slope. We want to come up just a teeny tiny bit more. But again, I'm going to go ahead and start lining up at the end of the runway anyway. Looks pretty good, looks pretty good. Don't need to do anything too excessive here. And one of the nice things about this airplane is we are not retractable landing gear, so we don't have to worry about that as a possibility. Unfortunately, on this particular version of the 172, we do not have the super flaps, the 40 degrees. So when we do deploy them, uh, we have to keep in mind it's going to take a little while to start slowing this thing down. All right, we're at our field, uh, basically our elevation for a proper altitude for approach here. It's going to be a thousand feet above, which is, like I said, puts us right at about a thousand. Everything's still looking good. Uh, we don't have to worry about anything like what fuel tank run or anything like that. We just need to make sure the fuel is turned on. We'll go ahead and flip on our landing light when we get a little bit closer. Normally, you'd want to be in control uh, as far as air traffic control this entire time, but it's perfectly fine. Rodim. Interesting. Hmm. Interesting. We're missing a page here, but that's all right. I'm not going to worry about it. This aircraft, believe it or not, is IFR capable, which actually is kind of neat. Gonna bring us to the left just a teeny tiny bit here. I don't need to do anything too excessive. All right, I think we're getting close enough. Go ahead and switch over to manual control. Automatic pilot is disengaged. Now we need to reduce our airspeed to get less than 110 so we can go ahead and deploy our first notch of flaps. There we have it right there. First notch of flaps comes down. We don't have to worry anything about any landing gear or anything like that. I'm swinging to my left a little bit here because you were just a little bit off. Like I said, there is a bit of a crosswind going on here. 80 knots is pretty good. We're going to hold it right about there because that's going to hold me pretty steady. Bring the nose up. Oh, looks like we have two whites and two reds, which means we're the correct altitude. Now we need to establish a vertical speed that is basically half of our airspeed. So in this case, if we're doing 80, we need to be doing about 400 feet per minute. That's going to get us a pretty solid glide slope. And obviously, as we start getting even slower, we can actually decrease that a little bit as well. All right, we're pretty much right on course. Like I said, we're at a slight oblique here, but it's nothing too, too bad. I'm going to go ahead and bring down our next notch of flaps. Take a look down. Looks good. Everything's solid. Let's go ahead and push the nose over a little bit. Start reducing speed to get down to our 65 knots. This aircraft slows down very quickly in the real world. So this is very interesting in this one. All right, last notch of flaps is down. Now, we're now doing 65 knots, which is uh, going, not going to be the world's quickest the, uh, vertical speed on the way down, obviously. So that would be up 350 feet per minute or so, but this seems to be working out fairly well. Again, yeah, experiencing a pretty nice little crosswind there. It gives us a good opportunity to practice our crab technique. Go ahead and switch to wing low. I'm going to go ahead and use my rudders to position me, and I'm going to go ahead and use my wing to go ahead and control my position. A little more airspeed here. A little high. Looks good. Chase the rabbit. Give myself just a little bit more right foot here. Looks pretty good. We're sliding just a tiny bit here again. Now we're going to do a little bit of wing low action here. A little bit more right foot. That looks pretty good. We're going to try to put down the back left tire first. So for this aircraft, because we're so small, we just aim for the numbers rather than the touchdown zone. So I expect our little lights there on the left to suddenly get very, very red long before we get down to the ground. A little bit of right foot, a little bit of left wing. 
And it's actually a pretty significant crosswind. I'm impressed. Airspeed is almost perfect. Basically, you're going to get close to the ground. We're going to coast. Smoothly reduce the throttle to zero. Nose is going to get very heavy. We're going to lift the thing up first. We're going to go ahead and put the back tire down first. And we're going to go swing around with the right foot. And we are perfectly on the runway. A little bit of uh, action there slowing down. And easy on the brakes on anything this small. And we have ourselves down and safe. Again, this uh, should be an um, interesting thing. If you've never flown this plane before, it's absolutely really, really, really simple. I think find it very, very easy. It's a pretty fun plane to fly. You can do some pretty dangerous things with it. And I uh, guess people who are paying attention did notice the fact that I forgot to click on the landing light. Again, we're not carrying anybody, so we don't have to worry about it. Enjoy.